Hi guys, Zanganada here. Um, been working on something a little recently to play around with auto migration within Proxmox uh, without any additional software uh, or using bash scripting. It's kind of basic at the moment, but it can allow for a lot of expansion later on. So, what we have first is we have our two Proxmox cluster nodes. We have Proxmox 1 and Proxmox 2. For the sake of this, I have a old quad-core Athlon and a uh, newer quad-core Xeon L5520 to be precise. But the idea is, is we have this uh, virtual machine. This isn't a container, this is actually a full virtual machine. And it's virtual disk is mapped to an NFS server that's actually running on one of the nodes, although in reality you would actually run this on a, a separate server for you know redundancy in case one of the Proxmox nodes actually fails. But anyway, uh, for this demonstration I'm just running it there. So the idea is that when this machine reaches a certain load, it will automatically migrate it to a theoretically more powerful machine. So say you could have one node that's really low powered that's on all the time and then when load starts to increase it could go and turn on the second node and then migrate machines that need the additional processing power for example to the higher power node but uh, for this example I'm just using two totally mishmash machines just to show that the script actually works. Um, so this top SSH here is our monitoring or heartbeat server. So in here I have an SH script called CPU monitor and basically all it does is every 30 seconds or so, yeah 30 seconds, it just SSHs into a machine that I'm using a pre-shared key on so it doesn't have to require a password from this this particular machine and all it does is it on this machine it just executes the command um, cat proc load average and that simply spits out a low rad, load average for the last minute five minutes and 15 minutes Load averages can be thought this way. The full value means a ho one, one whole core of usage. So if you've got one core machine, 1.00 means that core is 100%. If it says two, that means your core is maxed out and it is getting behind on jobs. It effectively needs another core. So if you have a quad core machine, so four cores, one would mean 25% usage of the machine overall, one core's usage. So your theoretical maximum would be four, even though you can lag behind. So what we do is we look at the load over the first minute, and we have a preset value here of 100, because, because Bash doesn't want to work with in, um, double values, it only wants to work with integers. Before I return the value, which is a decimal double value, to the bash script, I times it by 100, so hence I've got to work in multiples of 100. So it says, okay, my CPU usage is high once I hit 1, which is a full cause usage. Um, and then it, gets, it starts monitoring that. And then we have a value of 1.5, which is one and a half cores, or 75% usage of a dual core machine. Uh, and that's when it actually, over a five minute average, and that's when it will go and execute the migration. So all of this is using pretty simple script. I just tried to scroll down for an SSH, that's stupid. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, we just kind of grab the CPU load, and then once it's on the other machine, it'll start monitoring it for low CPU usage. So when the CPU usage drops below 50, so half a core's usage, over 15 minute average, because we don't want it to re-migrate prematurely, um, it'll then go and migrate it back to the low power node. So if I go ahead and execute this, it says CPU load script manager by Zanganada monitoring Ubuntu. So this is this machine. Um, so on this machine I actually have doo -doo 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 -doo, a Minecraft server running because it's a simple demonstration. 
as you can see there um, to try and give it some load because I'll show you that this is truly a live migration it is a supported function within Proxmox but not automatic migration so um, as you can see I've already been testing this because I've been blowing holes in the world so if I go over here and I do I'm using an application called stress to you can just simply do app tag get install stress and all this does is it pretty much puts false load on the server so if I do stress tac tac cpu and I wanna say I'm gonna put if you put one that'll give it a hundred percent usage on one core two for two cores I'm gonna put four because I want this to ramp prematurely really bloody quickly so and this goes ahead and you'll see CPU usage over here starts to increase like nuts it's now 100% although if I go into here and I quickly do cat slash proc slash load avg oh what have I done I put asvg you'll see that my load average is climbing quite quickly so it's already at 1.7 1.9 over the minute and you'll see this one will start going okay that's pretty damn high um, but you ignore the frame rate it's because I'm doing this for OBS um, you'll see that this server remains fully functional in terms of its Minecraft it's still running but now you noticed up here it says CPU load is high um, and if I go here you can see we're now at 3 which is it's now effectively two cores doing three people's jobs and it will keep going up to four because I've told it to go to four. Um, as you see the five minute average is gradually increasing and now it's just a case of waiting um, for it to kind of go well this is bloody high I need to move this. So why would you want to do this? Well if you've got mm, quite a large say if you've got gaming servers for example like this Minecraft one and they're not always at load and you want to cram more in effectively you could say run a lot so they're always live on a low power machine but as say they hit a peak period for that server that they all then migrate up to a faster power faster machine uh, that you could turn off for example when there are no machines running on it and you can turn it on okay so now you see it says machine is now high requirement starting migration and you see over here Mo Proxmox is saying it's migrating but you'll notice that this machine remains perfectly functional in terms of game servers da 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 la di da di da it's perfectly fine it's not hesitating to do anything it does take a while when you're running a minecraft server on it because it's got a lot of data to move over um, so yeah the server's still running blah -de blah -de blah and you can see over here it's in the work of migrating it if I were to go into the console of the actual Proxmox machine you'll see it'll be like copying live data that sort of thing status post migrate see it's now move over to another Proxmox node and it didn't go down at all so now it's moved from one machine to the other without me telling it to go and we also get a nice message up here saying machine moved to Proxmox 2 so if we look at the load average it's gone high so if we cancel this now we've got to wait for this value the third value which is the 15 minute load average to drop to below 0.5 and it will then re-migrate the machine back to the other node so let's just wait for that as you can see over here it says CPU load still high you don't have to have that message popping up it's just I like it to pop up so I know that it's uh, still running effectively so now the load is now starting to finally drop on the 15 minute average anyway still running you know minecraft server whatever um, I left the game though <laughs> to help drop the load quickly 
So yeah, this would be really good for server applications. Um, in, when game servers are involved, and you want to save a bit of power when you don't need it. For example, like say you're self-hosting these, or you've just got something else that that box really needs to be doing other than running VMs. So you've got more higher power stuff that just requires it. So, okay, we've now hit 50. That means when this next goes through and asks, it'll go, okay, I'm going to move it. So that should be within a couple of seconds, hopefully. Filling time. <laughs> and there we go. Machine is now low requirement, starting migration. You'll see over here in Proxmox, it'll start saying migrate. And then, you know, it's starting to be on more Proxmox 1. It'll start migrating it and moves the current running memory over. And as if by magic, it should go poof and move over. Hopefully. There, there we go. And it's moved over back to the original node or the low power node. So, oh, and we get it saying moved back to machine one. So why would you want to use this? I have no clue. <laughs> I thought it was pretty interesting. You could also do say the same thing on memory requirements. I'm not sure what you've got to cat to get the memory requirements out but say you've got containers that have uh, variable memory for example and you've only got a really low RAM powered machine and then you know you can move stuff that way. This obviously isn't a problem if say you've got one powerful machine, for example, um, you know, you don't really need this. But it's pretty interesting, you can play around with it, it's a way of getting live migration into Proxmox. Now I, I just want to, uh, later revisions of this will include um, multi-system sort of monitoring, so uh, you might have to run in something else um, other than just bash scripting. but. Yeah, I'll be able to, I hope to make it monitor both memory usage, so if memory usage starts to get a little high, although that could be an indicator of other problems. Oh, there's cat mode. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can move stuff based off memory requirements or CPU load usage. Or say even the Proxbox node is getting, you've got two powerful machines for example and you've got five VMs running on both and you can move them based on their load and the load of the machine as well. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. Hope that you found this may be possibly useful and I shall see you whenever. Goodbye. <laughs> that was the worst outro ever. <laughs> uh.